Lee, you're back from Ibiza, still alive. Good trip? Yeah, great trip. Uh, wasn't much for holiday now, but uh, yeah, it was good to get away with a uh, good group of lads. But uh, I must say, I'm happy to be home all the same. And Ollie, a few people have asked me about Robin Rowe and also Hunter's Call. Can you just tell us about how those two are getting on and, and sort of how far forward they are or, or you know what the plan with those two is? Yeah, positive news re, uh, re both them really. Uh, Robin Rowe's back in. Um, he's been in pre-training with my uh, with my mum down at Moore Farm for uh, for a good while. He's had a holiday. Um, he looks fantastic. Um, I suppose it'll be a day by day kind of thing with him, but he's uh, he's sound and he's trotting away. And uh, yeah, no good news re him. Uh, Hunter's cool. Got some great news uh, re him the day before yesterday. Um, his scans were, were were clean, and he's uh, he's due to come back and train now in the next fortnight. The 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 plan for him is to to go to Cheltenham in in November for the Great Wood. Um, he seems in seems in great form himself. Looks great, and really, 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 really looking forward to to, to get, getting him back. And he's only on, obviously only ran once for you, and, and won the the Ascot Hurdle, eighty five thousand pounds. You know, to, to the winner. You know, really one of the richest uh, handicaps in Europe. And uh, you know, to only have one run and win with him is great. But I, I'm sure you'd you'd like to get him back out on the track and and, and running again for you. Yeah, most definitely. He's obviously the horse that flew the flag for me last year. He's. Uh, yeah, he's a he's a stable star. Can't wait to have him back in. Um, and he's uh, yeah, hopefully he's a horse who can go in another nice pot somewhere. Craig Moore last week flew the flag for you again. Another nice winner gets you to 14. He actually broke the course record uh, in a two mile three handicap chase at, at Stratford. They went very very hard in that race, and I think his, his stamina just kicked in and, and, and won him the race really. <coughs> yeah, surprising really. A horse rate 105 and, and carrying 12 stone broke a course record. Um, I think it shows just how quick the ground is at the moment. But uh, it was a good performance. He got a very good ride by Richard Johnson, and he's owned by by some lovely people who live up the north of Ireland, Pat and Theresa McCartan. And uh, I was delighted to, to, to train my first winner for them. And I think he's a horse who's going to pay his way through the summer. And a couple of horses that, that ran a bit better for you. Walt Waterford ran last night at Worcester. And also, Knight Commander ran a nice race and was placed uh, in the week as well. Yeah, to improve performances. Um, there are two horses that had poor runs uh, previous to that to their last effort, so good to get them back on track, and so they can both win a race before they uh, before they head to the sales in uh, in the autumn. That'd be great. And a, and a couple of horses that were disappointing. We don't usually do this, but I think it's important to, to you know to not always talk about the winners. Auto Ab Chow was very disappointed in the seller. And also Candyberg ran, ran disappointingly up at, up at uh, Cartmel. Yeah, Candyberg ran too bad to be true, she put a complete line through that. Um, it was probably silly of me to go up there. The track didn't suit him and, uh, and nothing really went right for him. Uh, so I, I, I put a line completely through that. And Order Ab Chow, he's, uh, he's come home, he's sound and, and, and absolutely fine himself. But he's uh, he's been retired and he's gone back to to uh, a friend of his owners and uh, he, he's, he was a good horse for Alan King and unfortunately just lost his way a little bit but he's in one piece and he's uh, going to go and enjoy the rest of his, his career doing something else apart from racing. You've six runners today, you talk to Turk, can you take us through those and, and maybe your, your best chance of a winner? Yeah, uh, I thought my best chance of winner was Ayala in the first race. I actually thought it looked competitive enough but uh, she's definitely well capable of winning off 100. Crumpled and Crease runs in the same race, she's going to have to improve dramatically in what she's shown so far. Dr Maloney had a good first run for me in Market Raisin, but I thought we'd probably struggle to beat Dan's horse. Skilled is coming back after a break. I thought if he was placed it'd run a nice race, and I run two in the bumper. We've got Paye, uh, does everything okay at home. I didn't think this looked the, 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 uh, the, the weakest of bumpers. Um, I'd be delighted if he was placed, and this lovely lady, I thought she'd probably outrun her odds of eight or nine to one. She's had a couple of good runs and seems in good form, so I thought Ayala was my best chance to win her, probably followed by this lovely lady. And also, Miz and Master taking the, a long trip up to Newcastle tomorrow. He obviously ran a nice race last time. What, what would you rate of his chances? Yeah, I thought he'd run well tomorrow. Two miles uh, on a big galloping track will suit him well. Uh, he seems in very good form. I think he'll have come on for his run the last day. I think he's well capable of winning off his mark, and I'd be, I'd be hopefully good very close. I actually won the race last year, so hopefully it's a good owner. Bamf. Bamf, correct. Um, under Jamie Spencer, I believe. Yeah, correct. Good man, Rick. And you talked to her on Sunday, Newton Abbott Monday. You've obviously got horses in there. 
couple few horses in at Wolverhampton and Perth through the week. What what are you likely to run over the sort of weekend and early yeah, part of next I, week? I think I'll run odds and sods. Probably not a whole pile. Cape Icon will probably go to Wolverhampton on Monday. Again, a big learning curve with him. He's come from Clive Cox's. Uh, starting him off over seven furlongs. I'd imagine he might want a little bit further. Uh, Ayala has been declared again for Sunday at Utoxta, hoping she might win today and might be able to run under a penalty. Um, wishful thinking, as they say. Um, and next week, I've odds and sods in at Perth. I might send Mochuek up, up there for a two mile seven novice hurdle and a bumper horse called uh, Do Bit Society. I don't watch that Love Island, but I believe it's uh, a name that will amuse everyone. Um, so yeah, I may send a couple up to Perth, but apart from that, I, I just thought at the moment it'd be um, a fairly quiet week. And, and next week, I believe we're going to have a look at the facilities. Just just walking through the yard there, Ollie. Go back 12 months, and you had a, a barn and a barn with sort of no stables in it. Stables are going up everywhere. There's walkers going up. Obviously, new gallops gone in, etc. There, there's a, there's a lot happening at, at Warren Chase, and you know as you're growing. You know, the, the, the place is expanding, staff, car parks, you know, lorries, walkers, all sorts of things going on. We're going to take a good look at that next week. Yeah, we've obviously grown uh, beyond all belief in the last year. Well, so, um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll look forward to having a look at everything next week. There's a new barn going up at the moment with, uh, with another 34 boxes in it. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's plenty going on, though. That it's like a building site, but hopefully by the, by the middle of September we'll be, we'll be up and running and, and, uh, and rev for the, for the start of the national hunt season in October. And you've obviously just come back from Ibiza just for a few days on a stag do. You're going away for your sort of last holiday, um, you know, for, for you know five seven days, um, you know, as from Saturday. When you're away, obviously you've got a, a huge team of staff, and, and and Ed Telford does a good job. He's obviously started, you know, even before you were back from Ireland. You know, was here on the yard with with, with the horses, etc. And he obviously does a great job as as, as assistant as well as sort of Gerard Tomati that's just joined you. Yeah, no, I've been lucky. I have a great backbone um, of staff from from top to bottom, and, and obviously Ed and Jared are, are, are working alongside me. And it's it's nice to know when I go away, things are done properly. Um, and there's some great girls and, and plenty of great lads that have loads of experience and, and plenty of jockeys in every day. So it's it's not a big problem when I go away. And I'm looking forward to going away for for a week. Um, I haven't had a holiday in a year, so um, yeah, I can't wait to go away and and and, and chill out and come back um, refreshed and ready to to drive on with these winter horses. Good luck this week and uh, have have a nice holiday. Great job. Thanks very much.